yeah so good morning everyone and a very <laughs> warm welcome to all of you on this platform who are here to deliberate on this it's a lovely topic and it's a need of the hour i would say thank you so much yeah so now we are in a climate crisis we all say it's a climate crisis climate crisis so there's a panic around the world and everyone has different views of how to handle this crisis so can you go to the first slide please so according to me like hearing and reading like what is a climate crisis so i think what we call now as a climate crisis is an accelerated climate change because climate change happens naturally but now as humans we have accelerated due to our interventions and because of it we have caused pollution degradation of environment and all of it is interlinked to the loss of biodiversity and ultimately to the spread of diseases now we have landed in a pandemic and that mainly originated how because of deforestation and meddling with the wild flora so ultimately we land up in a reduction in quality of our life health and well being so that is what is the total climate crisis all about and the future we dream of why we are talking today why we need to create a better world we all have a dream we dream of a better world the future i think in terms of my dream is this the world that is sustainable in terms of management of natural resources everything is sustainable and everything is abundant we have what we need there is no lack of anything and it should be equitable just and comfortable for people to live with no discriminations no apartheid no racism and so on and all the human beings so compassionate and healthy and loving to each other so it's a world of joy beauty and prosperity what else do we need that is the future we all need as a race so how do we move forward from this state of climate crisis which we are perceiving as to be right now to this state of sustainability or a future dream so what to say so what is the way out so i just try to uh, conduct a sort of swot analysis the strength weakness opportunities and threat of the situation that we are right now so the strength is the scientific knowledge we have and also the traditional knowledge we have we have a lots in that and we have a lot of scientific data and the direction how to move ahead like aditya ji just shared before me so all these were the directions for us where to move and the awareness has already started that is why we are deliberating here today these are our strengths but what are the weakness we still have the process we are going is very slow and we are already late and the resistance to change or old ways of living thought technology it's there's a lot of resistance we need to have a common goal we don't have a common goal at as a community we have different goals people are there still uh, struggling to have three meals and there are some people aspiring to have more money than what they need by means of businesses never minding the environment and there are few people there fighting for the environment so we don't have a common goal at these are our weaknesses and the opportunities i see is the education and the young generation coming in see greta thunberg from sweden what level a small child could rise to question the politicians so these are the opportunities youth have started thinking so these disasters or whatever even this pandemia is an opportunity like aditya ji just summed up it's it's just the tip of the iceberg it is showing us the results are already visible and convincing for us to start making a change the process is on but only that we need to steer it in the right direction and expedite the process otherwise we'll be left behind and we may be late and steering around in too many directions not knowing where to go and the threat we still have is the population especially in countries third world countries like india we have a huge population so we are quite confused whether we should take the path of development or whether we should watch for the environment conservation development and conservation are always at crossroads mainly because of our population and because of that we are 
having many unsustainable management of natural resources and our present attitudes, lifestyles and value systems. The existing values are at present a threat and we need definitely a change. Change has started, but we need to expedite it. Next, please. So uh, this is saying of a great scientist, Gus Peth. He said, I used to think that the top environmental problems were biodiversity loss, ecosystem collapse and climate change. I thought that with 30 years of good science, we could address those problems, but I was wrong. The top environmental problems are selfishness, greed, apathy, and to do with those, we need a spiritual and cultural transformation. And we scientists don't know how to do that. So this is something we need to think and reflect about. So I'm a scientist presently, I'm doing research. I, I have played the role of a natural resource manager. I'm an IFS officer and I've spent 20 long years in the field working with environment, working with the people, creating forests and working with the village people, how to make them create uh, forests. But I know the hard truth, we are in conflicts. So out of my own reflection, I could say with conviction, no, no, just the same slide, previous, previous one. Previous one, please. Hello? Uh, yeah. So I could, yeah, this one. So the UN goals were there and we, are, we have been holding so many conferences across the world. So many schemes were there. We pumped in a lot of money to clean the air, water. We have acts in place, rules in place, but nothing was getting us that far. But this simple COVID pandemic, COVID, I just call it a flu. It's just a flu. And this, and that sent us into panic and a lockdown. And because of this, within a few days or just one or two months, the air was clear. We could see the Himalayas from Jalandhar and the Haridwar, the water is drinkable, Ganga, Yamuna, everything is clean. So what does it show? It shows that nature is quite resilient. If we humans just stop meddling with it and doing our intervention, just allow it to uh, take its own way, nature will clean itself. It has proved to us quite clearly what is our incompetence as a co-creator. We always talk of human stewardship in that, like we are custodians of the planet. That is called a human stewardship. That's a theory. So we always thought that we are co-creators in this universe, but it has proved beyond doubt that we have proved our incompetence and the planet will be better off without us. So this climate crisis, it's not the crisis for the planet as such, it's the crisis for the human race. Even if the human race is wiped out completely, the planet will become resilient and the, all the other life will be thriving. This is the hard truth we have to accept. Humans are not something that we are driving the planet. We are in fact meddling with it. The next one. Next slide, please. So this is a stage before we uh, start steering and moving towards control of climate crisis. We need to reflect and introspect who we are. We always uh, associate with this human body and say we have a mind. Mind is not the brain, mind you. Mind is something more than that. And we all acknowledge that we have a soul. This is a truth. So, but then we associate more with the human body. And because of that, we seek our comforts, economy, and the whole world, where are we driving? We are driving towards the economy. And what is the economy for? It is just to uh, safeguard our human body. If you think, if you just see the other animals, plants, everyone is carefree. They are taken care of their food, shelter, everything is taken care of. Ultimately, here, uh, what we call as our basic needs of uh, food, shelter, and other things, that is what we strive for in a, as a career to earn money and so on and so forth. If you reflect, it's all just for our body, but we are beyond our mind and we have a soul. That's the ultimate truth. And now what is the modern medicine saying? It is saying the human body is an ecosystem which have so many microbes. The number of microbes is 10 times more than our body cells and 100 times more than our own genetic material. And these microbes control everything right from our happiness, health, and well-being. So 
are we really in control of our body if we are we won't have so many diseases right from diabetic to cancer all are controlled by these microbes this is what the modern medicine is coming up with this has been told by hippocrates long back we are what we eat and it's something that's linked so what we eat feeds these microbes and these microbes control us next one next slide please so i would say uh, we are souls with a human body and a human mind these body and mind are gadgets for this soul so if we think of life ultimate souls these souls are connected with the real creator whom whom we may call god so this is a spiritual uh, perspective of this crisis i'm just bring to you just to think so once we give everything in the hands of our souls we will easily be able to orient our lifestyles and success around that right now what we tell our children you study you have to become big so and so so and so to what to earn money and money and we don't talk of our climate or planet but now children are thinking so let us change our success orientations children were frantically preparing for the exams and with the pandemic they have just slowed down now at least look at it as a possibility to think why we are studying why we need to have a career and what next so let's reflect on that and let's have a collective goal towards sustainability the collective goal can come only when the poverty and hunger goes and people are able to think on the same same platform and we need to have a lifestyle that's healthy for us so that it will be healthy for the planet the healthy lifestyle will be healthy for the planet and vice versa why i say in terms like i just told you about these uh, gut microbes to feed the gut microbe they say you should have good food clean air clean water and poison free food and most of next slide please next slide poison free food with plant based foods not meat they say rearing meat eggs it's it takes more area you know so i'm not going deep into it you can read these things they are being deliberated so our food has to change our lifestyle has to change consumption car ac and fridge so many gadgets we can cycle down a bit walk down why we are always in a hurry and just going with our own individual cars not able to use the public transport and so on so this pandemic has brought us another opportunity we are able to be connected online we are not sitting in the same place traveling so many kilometers so these are some things we need to reflect so a healthy lifestyle to take away all the diseases we are in right now even now this pandemic tells us very clearly only those people who have a weak body with a weak immunity are being wiped off those who have a good immunity have a healthy lifestyle can really thrive so i would all urge you let's listen to our inner voice which is called the soul's voice so if we allow this to take the lead all of us will definitely have a common goal next one so let's start it's better late than never we are already late that's true but let's make a change i would like to end my talk with a few quotes our father of the nation had told us long back earth provides enough to satisfy every man's needs but not every man's greeds it's our greeds that have brought us to this climate crisis and ralph waldo emerson said we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors we borrow it from our children so we are now eating into our resources of the future generation we need to feel sorry about that what earth are we giving to our children so right now let's change our ways and let's start living judiciously and hand over this planet to our future generation in a good shape thank you